Hey, good morning, lovers of God's Word. This is Dr. Tom. I would like to make an instructional video on just what some personal beliefs are in Christianity and what the Bible teaches. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, the Bible tells us, We then, as workers together with Him, we beseech you, this means we're pleading with you, that you have not received the grace of God in vain. He says, I have heard thee, in a time accepted, in the day of salvation I have secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time, now is the day of salvation. You see, friends, I have people sometimes that tell me that they're a Christian, but they feel empty all the time. I'll ask them how often do they read the Word. Some of them never read it, some of them read it insensibly. It's like there's really no middle ground in between. But my friend, here's the deal. If you're always reading and never coming to a knowledge of the truth, and what that word knowledge is, is epigenosko, and it means it joins itself to you and leads you from wherever you are closer to Christ. If it is not leading you, your knowledge of the scriptures, into a better walk with Jesus, then ask yourself, why do I think that I'm a Christian? What he's saying here in 2 Corinthians 6 is you did not receive Christ in vain. And God secured you. Why would they think that? Because friends, in the time of Corinth and Rome, the most dangerous thing to be was a Christian. I know in America the most dangerous thing to be is usually a chicken or a piece of beef. People want to eat it and get it. Especially in a Baptist church church there ain't no piece of fried chicken safe in a church dinner now that's kind of a little bit of humor but the truth and reality is is how many times do we value food more than souls cars work labor our time our efforts how much time do we spend in the things of God talking with God honoring God Friend, if you receive Jesus Christ, he secured you. Your faith is anchored in Christ, not in you. <laughs> you see, I'm the ship out there doing this. My life will throw me in any direction. My, I, I sometimes get afraid. Last night I got afraid. I got up. And I said, Lord, I'm going to trust thee. Make me the man I should be. Help me to do what I need to do. And I heard in my mind when I went out, he said, Tom Jr., you go back and go to bed. I got this. I said, Thank you, Lord. He did. God took good care of us. Friends, true Christianity is this. When you cried out to God, if you cried out with a broken heart, you see, here's the key of salvation. God, a broken heart, he will never despise. You see, a heart that's broken when it sees its own sin is a heart that's wanting God to come in and heal it. I don't think there's a person that's ever been born that has not had, except Jesus. Jesus is the only one. But every other person on this planet has been scarred by sin in some way. Everybody gets to experience rejection at some point in their life. Everybody gets to experience loneliness emptiness but the day Jesus comes into your heart you are no longer alone you are no longer empty friend if you are then you need to say Lord Jesus I don't think I truly got saved because Pastor Tom says that when you come into the heart you give love joy peace friends I'm going to tell you when I got down on my knees as a sinful man I was 24 years old. I thought I owned the world. I was making more money than I ever thought I would possibly be able to make. I bought everything with cash. I had a business with 15 people working under me full time. Their families depended on me making them a salary. And I was the most unhappy man I could be. I was empty. Alcohol, drugs didn't change it. Friendship didn't change it. Me and my buddies would party. My wife would. But it wasn't until the day a man followed me around with a Bible. And he got on my nerves. What he didn't know, but God did know, is that God had been speaking to my heart. I didn't pray with that man. But when I got home, I prayed. I got saved. 
God has given me a joy that has never left me. Never. Even in the bad times. Friend, I'm going to tell you, turn to Jesus today. He didn't give you salvation that's full of emptiness, but rather, like the woman at the well, He filled us with the Holy Spirit and the glorious washing of the renewing of the Word so that now other people can come to us and get some water from the well. And that Jesus is our well. That Jesus is what they need, and it is the Lord Jesus Christ, the God, the Messiah, the Creator, the only thing that could really fill you up. Father, I pray today that we'd realize we have not been saved in vain, but rather you are working in our hearts, minds, and lives. Friends, just this morning at the beach, I was praying, I said, Lord, would you bring us a friend? Just somebody to say hi to. I don't care who it is or how you do it or when you do it. Do it in your own way. Well, my wife and daughter took me to the beach because I haven't been, this first time I've lived here 15 years, but because of my health, I've never really gone to the beach. That sharks. But I fell asleep floating and I looked up and I was, I get a little bit away from the beach. And so I flipped over and swam in. And this couple come walking up and they walked right up to me and he says, you from around here? I said, yeah, about a mile from here. He says, well, he says, most people don't realize you can't fall asleep or you'll wake up in the middle of the ocean. I said, yeah. I said, it's just this is the only water bed I can ever sleep on. I said, what's your name? Friends, my wife's right here. What was it, 10 minutes? We talked to them, 5, 10 minutes. And they were Christians. That's our God. Rest in the Lord today. He's not empty. He hears your prayers. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that today you have given us the peace that passes understanding, but the love for you and others. In Jesus' name, we attribute this to you, and we consecrate ourselves more fully to you, asking that we would decrease, Lord. Make yourself increase in them. Anoint our lips today that we may speak blessings to others. Anoint our mind that we will think the things of Christ. And let us always rejoice, because we are all brethren under one Son, capital S, the Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name I pray. Amen. Lord bless you this day.